So the OAuth username password flow. So this is an example of a flow which doesn't require user interaction and as part of the OAuth steps, steps involved. So essentially this flow allows a client application to, to call an auth, auth server um, and supply the user's um, username and their actual plain text password um, together with a, a, a secret that, um, uh, that identifies to the authorization server that this is the, the, the client app. Um, additional to, to to, to that setup, um, we need to be absolutely sure with this flow that because we're dealing with plain text passwords that the client is able to securely store and manage not just the, the client secrets, um, but also the plain text passwords for, um, for, uh, for, for the users who, who are being authenticated in this way. Um, so the, the passwords are exposed to certainly the um, the auth server in the, in the request um, and they would also have needed to be either stored in the client application or collected in real time and um, so both of those mechanisms um, there's a number of number of places um, that that the risk is introduced around those those passwords being exposed um, we'd also because we're, we're sending these passwords as, as rest requests and um, we need to be absolutely certain that the transmission channel is is trustworthy and there's no possibility at all of a man in the middle attack um, otherwise the the passwords themselves could be could be exposed so running through the steps of this flow so the this involves a, a, a client application and the authorization server that is is checking the um, the uh, the credentials of the, the users being being authorized um, and the resource server which will be integrating with the client application. So the, the flow involves an access token request to the token endpoint of the auth server and HTTP post out of band request and the parameters of this request include the use so of the client ID so that um, identifies the specific app at the auth server client secret is required for this flow. So this needs to be held within the client application and, and managed securely. The username of the user that the access token will need to correspond to and the password for that user. And the grant type uh, here uh, is set to, set to password. So the authorization server checks the credentials that have been provided for that user and checks that they, they match the authorization server credentials. It verifies that the user has access to, to the app. So in Salesforce, this is done slightly differently depending on the connected app setting. So if the if the setting um, admin users are all admin users are admin approved users are pre-authorized, then the user will consider to, to to be authorized to use the, access, the, the app if they are a member of a permission set or, or profile that's associated with the app, otherwise the request will, um, uh, will be rejected. Um, if, the app, um, if the users are allowed to self-authorize option is used, then, then all users will be able to, to, um, uh, to, to, part, to, um, uh, to be set as, as, as users in this access token request. The authorization server uh, responds to this uh, this uh, post request with the um, the access token response, so assuming that the credentials match and the client secret matches, and the token response will be returned to to the client, um, along with the, uh, the scopes to indicate how that access token can be used. The client is then free to use the access token to uh, to call the APIs at the resource server. So what to consider around this flow? So um, the, the biggest thing to consider is it is much higher security risk than other flows. So we have plain text passwords being potentially collected, stored, sent over the wire, unencrypted. Um, there's a number of threat vectors that, that are opened up um, because we're, we're, we're sharing these passwords in, in multiple places. And so it's, it's um, it's it's a very high 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 security risk flow. Uh, there's also no opportunity to integrate multi-factor authentication into this flow. So 
Whereas with an interactive flow, we can have multi-factor authentication at the auth server um, and with a um, with a, either a job bearer or a SAML assertion bearer flow, we're able to, uh, to implement multi-factor authentication for the initial scope approval that the user could make. Um, there's no, no equivalent for this flow. The prior user, user approval um, isn't checked. So um, whereas with, um, with the JOT or, or, or SAML assertion bearer flows, um, we're able to, um, to uh, delegate the, um, the responsibility to approve the app to the, the end user. And there's no, there's no equivalent to do that. So it's, it's really down to the, um, the implementation of the connected app as to whether or not the, the user is, um, is, is approved or not with this flow. Um, the, it's also worth mentioning the, probably unsurprisingly, the, um, the IETF recommendation is, is not to use this flow in, um, in, in any circumstances. So <laughs> considerations on choosing when to use this, it's probably fair to say um, if you have implemented this, the chances are um, that there would probably have been a more secure alternative. Um, this is almost never a good idea. Um, so there's a very high risk of, of exposure um, of, of passwords, as I mentioned, um, those can be exposed in multiple systems in multiple ways. Um, something like there's a particular risk specific to this flow um, around a man in the middle attack is that we are, because we are literally sharing credentials um, as part of the REST, REST, re REST request, um, any, uh, um, any interception of that request um, would, would result in di direct um, a compromise of, of user credentials, um, which could be used in a, in a multitude of ways. There's no, as I mentioned, there's no um, user specific authorization. So we're not able to have that, that per user um, delegation and to be able to track who's said they are and aren't um, comfortable for, for, the, um, uh, for their, 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 um, uh, their access to be delegated to the, to the client application. Um, there's also uh, no opportunity to use multi-factor authentication as part of this flow. Um, so the only possible circumstances that we might want to think about this flow, um, other than uh, just generally as part of developing applications, it's quite handy sometimes to just um, to just use this flow to to get an access token to test other parts of the um, other parts of the development. Um, but for production systems. Um, we might potentially consider this um, if we're developing um, a system where the um, uh, where the client and the the um, the auth server um, are actually part of the same system, so they're completely within the control of of um, of, of of that system. Um, that's not relevant to Salesforce. Um, the other context is that really, if we're integrating with an application that doesn't support any other um, OAuth flow. Um, and we can guarantee that there's complete trust and complete security um, across both the, um, the collection of the passwords, the storing of the passwords, um, and the, the, uh, the integration, uh, the, the REST request and response, the, so the transport security that we have um, for, that, for that interaction. Yeah.